All right, how am I doing on time here? Main card. Kendall, the Spider Grove, no, Dust Spider, excuse me. We got Dust Spider and Dust Spider on the same card. That's going to be confusing. A lot of arachnid battles here on this card. Uh, Kendall Grove taking on Mark Munoz. This is going to be my upset pick. I'm going to go with Kendall Grove. Um, I think in the striking, he leaps and bounds better than Mark Munoz. Munoz's strikes are just really, I'm, I'm really not digging his striking. I mean, he got outboxed by Nick Catone, who's not a great striker. He got, you know, he had way too much trouble with Ryan Jensen on the feet than, you know, anyone should. And, you know, of course, there was the head kick to Matt Hamill. And, and even in before the, the head kick, Hamill was just jabbing him to death. And Kendall Grove striking is, it's not great, but he actually knows how to use his length. He'll throw a jab out there. He'll throw leg kicks. He'll, you know, throw body kicks. He'll use knees. He'll use his length really well. And I think he's going to have a... You know, he's going to have an extreme wrestling disadvantage, no doubt, but he likes to play rubber guard, which I think can play factors in controlling Munoz's ground and pound. I think he can go for submissions from his back, which are good. We saw in the Jake Rochelle fight. He had almost had an arm bar on Ricardo Almeida, of all people. So I think he can score points, even from his back, you know, hit him with some elbows. I think it could be a close decision that, you know, some people might be arguing for Munoz, but... I think Kendall Grove is going to do enough to win. So this is my upset special. Kendall Grove is going to... I don't think he's going to dig the grave, unfortunately. Because he, do, he does it so well. No, Kendall Grove, by decision, taking out the Filipino wrecking machine. All right. A guy that I am very glad to see on a main card, Terry Edom taking on Rafael Dos Anjos. I'm really big on Terry Edom. You know, I did a video on him before. Um, I think he's, you know, a great prospect and... I really like the way UFC is bringing him up, you know, giving him the slow build, you know, after this fight, maybe giving him a little bit of a tougher test and then maybe some contenders after that. So um, I like Edom in the fight, of course. You know, Dos Anjos definitely poses some problems. Edom is always kind of a slow starter. You know, he gives up some takedowns. He's still not a great wrestler. That's easily his, his weakness. Dos Anjos has got some good takedowns. He's, of course, you know, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. On the feet, he's not bad either. Throws some good leg kicks. But Edom is just a killer in the striking department. I mean, if you see the first round of the Sam Stout fight, I mean, Sam Stout's a good striker, and Edom just worked him, just destroyed him. I mean, we saw the knockout against Brian Cobb. We saw the uh, the beating he put on Justin Buckholes before he ended up finishing with a Darce. I mean, he's just a great stand-up fighter, and I think he's going to warp Dos Anjos with either a knee or a head kick sometime in the second round. So I see Terry Adam winning by knockout in the second round. Just uh, being the faster, more aggressive, and better striker. But Dos Anjos, he's, he's a decent live dog. You know, I mean, he can get takedowns and, and work his jiu-jitsu game, but you know, maybe I just can't get the image of him getting shuriken uppercutted by, Dos, uh, by Jeremy Stevens. And I think Adam... Not as uh, not as Street Fighter esque in the finish, but still a emphatic win for Terry Adam in this one. Matt Hughes, Henzo Gracie, who cares? Matt Hughes by decision. Moving on. If you guys want to hear me break down that fight more, too bad. Matt Hughes is gonna get takedowns. Henzo is gonna gas like he always does. Matt Hughes isn't gonna get caught in a submission. Henzo is pretty one-dimensional. Hughes probably is the better striker for the first time in his entire career. And he's going to get takedowns. They're going to gas. It's going to be boring. Hughes' decision. All right, lightweight title fight. BJ the Prodigy Penn taking on Frankie the Answer Edgar. Um, BJ Penn is going to win this fight. You know, Frankie Edgar really doesn't have much for Penn other than maybe toughness. And uh, I think that's... You know, while Edgar, I think, I'll just give my pick. I'm going to pick BJ by decision. I think he's, I think Edgar is tough enough to where he can last the whole five. Um, but Penn is going to just completely outwork him in every facet of the game. Penn is the better striker. His boxing is awesome. Some people were uh, saying that I was overestimating his boxing before the Diego fight. How'd that turn out? Um, he just completely destroyed Diego. He's going to. I don't think he's going to murk Edgar as bad, but he's going to beat him up pretty bad. I mean, Edgar's face is going to be pretty mangled up. Not as mangled as Diego's, but 
pretty bruised and bloodied. Um, he's going to beat him in, in the stand-up. Edgar is not going to be able to get takedowns. He's going to give up his back in scrambles if he wants to start those, and that's just a mistake. He's going to press BJ up against the fence, kind of like Kenny Florian did, and have little to no success. BJ's probably got the best takedown defense in, in the world. Um, and, you know, I think BJ is just going to consistently outstrike him and just win every round and win it decisively. See a 50-45, maybe even 50-44 decision here for BJ Penn taking home that lightweight belt with his fourth title defense. So BJ Penn, by an unanimous decision, Frankie Edgar is going to hang tough, but he's going to get beat up. Middleweight title fight, Anderson Silva versus Damian Maya. Now, on a radio show, the MMA Fanatics, I really laid into uh, HK718 for saying that Damian Maya has no chance in this fight. Because he does, and he's got probably the best chance of anyone Anderson Silva's fought since Nate Marquardt. Um, now, some of you are going to be like, well, E-dubs, you know, did you see what Marquardt did to Maya? Yes, we all saw it. And is that possible again? Yes, of course. Anderson Silva can hit and hit hard, and he's probably the best striker in the world. Can he lace Maya quickly? Yes. And I think that's what's going to happen. But still, Damian Maya still, if he can get a hold of Anderson, whether it's pulling guard or getting a takedown, or just any, any way of getting into the ground, he can easily win this fight. I mean, easily. Anderson Silva gives up position like it's nobody's business. Travis Luter had him mounted, and Damian Maya would absolutely run circles and circles and circles around Travis Luter on the ground. Anderson Silva's takedown defense not good. Got taken down by, um, got taken down by Luter. Got taken down by Marquardt. Got taken down by Talos Latis. You know, positionally worked by, by you know, two of those guys. Damian Maya is probably the world's best grappler at 185. Um, it's between him and Jacques, right? I mean, they're like they're right there. Um, so, but that being said, Anderson Silva, I think his his striking is just too fast. But Maya can Maya is benefited in the fact that Anderson Silva is a bit of a late starter. I mean, other than Lieben, he hasn't starched anyone in the first minute in you know almost ever. Even against Forrest, he took a little while to get his timing and whatnot. And in that in that quick time frame, you know, the first two minute mark, that's when Maya needs to strike. That's when he needs to get takedowns. That's when he needs to pull guard. That's when he needs to work his submission game and be aggressive. You need to be aggressive against Anderson Silva. You can't be afraid of him. You gotta go for broke. You know, like Daiju Takasi, like Rio Chonin. That's how they beat him. You know, they went for broke and they got submission victories. That's what Damian Maya needs to do. But I'm picking Anderson Silva by knockout in the first round. Um, you know, if Maya even tries to stand with him for 10 seconds, it's going to be, you know, or 10 more seconds than he needs to, Anderson Silva's going to lace him. Um, his countering is just brilliant. His power and his speed is off the charts. So if Maya oversees his welcome on the feet, it's going to be one quick, you know, um, straight right or, you know, left jab, and that's going to put him on queer street. Maybe we get to see some uh, Muay Thai clinch action again, but Anderson Silva is going to win this fight, and it's going to be by knockout. Could be in the second round, but I'm going to go with the first round. Um, be a little ballsy since I only have, like, four stoppages. Might as well go for broke, um, like Damian Maia needs to do. See? See what I did there? So, uh, those are my UFC 112 predictions. Thanks, guys, for listening, and or watching, either way, if you have it minimized or you're watching me rant in my Kansas football shirt. Um, but thanks for watching slash listening. I'll be putting the uh, the link, it's actually down there now, of all the guys that are going to be in this kind of prediction league that I'm going to be in. And uh, hopefully I do well. So this is probably going to be two videos. I tried to make it one, but talk too long. So this is probably going to be two videos, so thanks for watching both, and uh, peace out, everybody.